how do you find a company to sleuth? Because the sleuthing investigations are so heavy duty, it's so intense and take usually a longer time than usual, you better find the right target. And let's face it, there are thousands, if not tens of thousands, publicly traded companies in North America, plus a few more worldwide, if that's your gig. And to find the right kind of company is kind of crucial because if you're going to spend three to four to five months, and I once invested 11 months in excluding one company, it was worth it, by the way, then you better choose the right target. How do you do that? There are three or four main methods, which I will go into, and then I'm going to mention briefly the secondary methods. The first method, of course, is to choose the spectacularly wonderful company you'd love to own, but not at this price. In this, by the way, you are going to act like a principal, not like an agent. Most money managers who are running investment funds in the market, the pension fund managers, mutual fund managers, index fund managers, the fish whose money you'd like to take, they are agents, which means they are accepting a price offer from somebody else and say yes or no. If you are a principal, a principal who is one who is offering a deal, offering a price, with that frame of mind, you can say you are looking for the best companies and you decide what price you're going to pay. And the magic of the market is that unless, unlike real estate or unlike other kind of some other businesses, you can offer a price and put the price out there and it's going to stay there good until canceled, which means nearly forever. Let's assume you love Tiffany, a lovely company, one of the best jewelry retailers in the world, but everybody knows it and therefore the price reflects it. Still, it has been increasing dividends at 10, 11% per year since 09 or so. Lovely company. So what you decide, you are going to buy them at cash per share or working capital per share or net net per share. Net net is the working capital less all the debt of which they have very little. And you decide how much is per share and you put the price there. You say you're going to buy 100 shares of Tiffany at this ridiculously insulting price and you put it in your, in your broker's account. It's there. Now, assume one day something happens on the street and the Tiffany store burns completely and for a year they're out of commission. I don't wish it on anybody, least of all on good companies. At that moment, the, the, the public panics. And if there's also financial panic at the same time, what do you know? You come to the office one day or you come home one day and you realize you are long 100 shares of Tiffany at what? At a ridiculous price per share? And then you do some sleuthing work. Then you invest a month or two or three, probably less because you know quite a bit about it. You make phone calls, you talk to people and the company whose acquaintance you already have made. And then you realize it's good and you fill up your head with the stock. And when the stock goes up to the real value, you can either sell some or keep owning it because your cost is very little, collecting dividends. And when do you sell it? When you find somebody better at another ridiculous price. So the first method for targeting company to sleuth is make a list of all the companies you admire and that you love, but you like to own only at a ridiculous price. Warren Buffett, by the way, has bought Geico, the government employee insurance company, to the company he admired, but one day, one year the company got into trouble and they had to be almost sold as a bankruptcy. Warren Buffett realized the price is very cheap and he traveled all night in his car from Iowa, from, from, from Omaha, Nebraska, and he talked to the person in charge of cleaning up the mess and he realized the value of the company was tremendous and the value was direct contact with government employees who will buy the insurance from it. He began to fill up his hat. Remember, he has known the company for a while he knew what it was. He didn't put a hundred shares to buy at ridiculous price, but it was in his mind. And when he saw the price, he didn't pounce on it. He first of all did some sleuthing. He went to speak to the person who knew all about it, was in charge of cleaning it up. When he talked to him and he realized it's so valuable based on the latest physical information and talked to the person, then he bought. So make a list of all the lovely companies, the admirable companies that you admire and that you realize their business is terrific. And then you put in 100 shares to buy of each. And if it's a thousand buck company, make it one share to buy. There are such companies too. And then you wait. And after 10 years, you may not hit it, have even bought one. Or one day you'll have financial crisis. Again, heaven forbid, I don't wish it to happen. If it does happen, you go to the office, you realize you are long two lovely companies. And then you can buy some more. There's another question here. What are lovely companies with a good business? 
In other words, what is a good business? I'll go into it in a different clip, and I'm going to go to some of the criteria I got at the Stanford Business School by Professor Stephen Brandt. And he basically took some of the principles of Peter Drucker, added one of his own, and I did one more of my own in a much later clip. So to sum up, the first method of targeting, you look for the companies you'd love to own, you give them a ridiculous buy price, you put 100 shares to buy, and then you go and do whatever else you want, just go to sleep, go to the beach, go read a book, go write a book, I do both. And then one day you may end up owning lovely companies at a ridiculous price. So that's one method. It's kind of a slow method, but it works. The other method, the other method is to go the other way around. You can look at all the companies trading extremely cheaply. For this, you go for value line. Value line is one of the preferred reading methods for Warren Buffett and also for me. You can find in one page all the information, all the blips and the ink on a company. In one page, you can see exactly what happened the last 20 years. Many public libraries, by the way, have today electronic access to it. Take a look at the page and you're going to get a snapshot of all the numbers are that all the other fish in the market are looking at. Remember, just because other people are investing based on blips and ink doesn't mean you should ignore those things. You should know them too. But on top, you should also do your own sleuthing. So you look at those, those numbers in value line and every week, every month, value line publishes names of, of companies and numbers of companies trading below breakup value, below net networking capital, below book value, all the companies trading at extremely cheap prices. You look at them, most of them deserve to be selling cheaply. And you can keep all these companies on your radar. You don't have to act today. You, act, you put it on the radar screen, you put it on the side, and you, are, you keep once a month screening for any changes that happen in them. The screen you again can do via the old trust, trust the internet. One day, if you find out that a very able, experienced manager came to one of them, you can start doing some sleuthing. Or if you find that many employees are coming back to them, or the company got a lot of contracts, or the bank forgave some of the loans, or any other thing that make the company a bit better. Again, you look at them. And if the company business is only ho-hum, you give it a miss. The stock may give, may still go up, but remember, no FOMO, which means no uh, fear of missing out. You can miss a lot of stuff, but what you want is really the best stuff. So one method is to look at terrific companies, put a stinking bid price on them and wait. The other one is look at all the cheap companies trading a stinking low price and see which one of them you like to sleuth. Um, by the way, Value Line collects all the purely net net companies selling basically below breakup value. It's the company selling below the financial minerals in, their, in its body. And the moment there are plenty of those in the market, the market usually is cheap. And when there are only very few, such as, for example, now, the market is not cheap. Now, no matter what the market is, you can always find a bargain. But sometimes there are plenty of them, sometimes there are less. Okay, the second method was to look at cheapies and try to find out when is the right time to sleuth them. The third method is to become an expert in the area of the market. If you decide as an engineer that your expertise is microchips, you can start talking to everybody in the microchip business until you know it as an insider. And then you ask some people on the inside, if you had to own one company of microchips, microchip production, microchip design, microchip testing, whatever area you want to, you want to name, what company would you like to own in your family for a long time? And they will tell you. This company you can look at and you can decide one more time which is the stinking big price you're going to pay and you put the price on your radar screen and you can even put a hundred shares to buy that price and wait. The combination of waiting and also looking at cheapies is some of the best way to, to sleuth, for example. For example, I, I do it quite, quite often. It's also a good pastime to look at numbers and to look at also at text searches and see something came up. Now, another method is to look at companies that you have known for quite a while and a change come at them. The company has been dormant for quite a while, but all of a sudden things begin to wake up. Again, this is worth some sleuthing. Don't have to be very deep. You just try to see what you can find out to see if it's worth to get even deeper. And there are other methods. You can find your own. You can just talk to people all around. You can do a text search. For example, the board just fired the CEO and brought another CEO in. Or somebody uh, who is an active investor uh, bought 20 or 30% of the company and begin to agitate. 
again, if you look at those things, some of them are okay, but not spectacular. If you are limiting yourself on the spectacular and the outstanding, you are bound to make much more money than the average. But remember, the targeting is basically to save you aggravation of target of sleuthing the wrong thing. What you really want to do is targeting the right company and then spend time and money on it. And even so, I can tell you, one out of every three or four times of your doing sleuthing will be successful if you are lucky. In my case, it's one out of four or five times. And the trick will be to prevent yourself from acting when it's only good, but not quite good enough. Keep your, keep your powder dry only for the best times. And then when you find something, then go and do the sleuthing. Now, how does the sleuthing itself go? What do you do first? What do you do second? What do you do third? For this, I'll have to go to another analogy. I like to work with analogies. And this one is comparing the, the uh, sleuthing process to a civilian intelligence operation. Let me tell you why um, in the next clip. Meantime, don't forget to subscribe, to buy my book and read it. You're going to find many more methods there than you are meeting here.